Hey everyone, welcome back to another video here on the Matt VidPro AI YouTube channel. I hope you're all having a fantastic day. As we round the corner into 2026, all of the AI firms are trying to get their last projects out before the end of the year to stay competitive, to maintain their edge in this AI race. The biggest fights of the year have really been between Google and OpenAI, I think, and this is really no different. What you see, this human cell diagram has been made by Hazel Gen 2. This is a mystery model floating around on those AI battle arenas, the A and B testing. Everyone in the community is super confident that this is indeed from OpenAI as GPT Image 2, their answer to Google's Nano Banana Pro. And those are big shoes to fill. Nano Banana Pro is insane. I've been using it for all of my thumbnails. Easily the most advanced AI image generator I've ever come across. The prompt here from Simon Smith, create a fully labeled diagram of a human cell with at least 10 elements. Make sure these labels are precise and accurate. How well did it do? Is this diagram accurate? First of all, there's quite a bit that it got right. Obviously human cell spelled accurately at the top, plasma membrane pointing directly here. And I think the detail on this plasma membrane is very good. We've got cytoskeleton, centrosome, lysosome, mitochondrion, Golgi apparatus, vesicle, ribosomes, smooth and rough endoplasmic reticulum. I think the text here is good. All right, guys, let's pull up some human cell anatomy. All right, first up, Golgi complex. Not looking super accurate. At least it points to a separate part. As you can see, it looks like this wavy, like scrambled bit, leaving me to believe that this would be the Golgi apparatus. It looks like the ribosome is literally just kind of like a little dot. So we'll give ribosomes a pass on here, although it does kind of look like it's pointing to this organelle. It looks like it is mistaking the vesicle here for the mitochondria. Obviously, the mitochondrion is not going to be where the nucleus is. Smooth and rough endoplasmic reticulum are pretty good. Obviously, like nucleus here is accurate. Lysosome is also inaccurate. You can see it's kind of like this big green blob here. Instead, lysosome is kind of pointing again towards like really nothing. It's more just towards the nucleus. I imagine this would be the lysosome. It's calling that a centrosome, which I assume is supposed to be this part right here, the centroils. It did okay. Does it look pretty decent? Yes. The text is accurate, and I think the terminology is good as well. It's just actually being scientifically correct that is the difficult part for this model so far. I've just generated this image with Nano Banana Pro. I will say right off the bat, this is way more textbook and basic. Although we aren't prompting for anything super photorealistic or high detail, this looks more accurate. I think the vesticles look pretty decent here. It got the mitochondria correct, although it did call this mitochondria the rough endoplasmic reticulum, which is definitely wrong. It mixed up centrioles for microtubules. Golgi is looking much better this time. The lysosome is also correct this time. At least for this one shot side by side, Nano Banana Pro wins in scientific accuracy, but by less than you would think. By the way, if you want to get early access to these models, Can says that they're being tested in Design Arena and LM Arena. Can made a few observations on this model. World knowledge seems to be similar to Nano Banana Pro. Celebrity selfies are generatable with a similar quality to Nano Banana Pro. Can write code and images well. Here is a whiteboard showing some pretty advanced text generation, but nothing absolutely mind-blowing. PlayStation 4 controller generated nearly flawlessly. I'd say that is pretty impressive, but Nano Banana Pro is definitely just as capable. Here is a celebrity selfie. Again, Nano Banana Pro also hugely capable in this area. This definitely looks pretty realistic. Some main giveaways, though, would be Kevin Hart's chain here is broken, and there is a decent amount amount of bokeh background blur on this photo, which clearly appears to be taken with a phone. The lighting and everything, it just appears to be a little too perfect. Here is another similar example. You can see we're noticing two different aspect ratios, a social post one and a more widescreen one, but I'm not seeing a 9x16 or 16x9, which definitely would limit our options. Original 
GPT Image-1 only had two aspect ratio options. Adam Holter, who is a great member of our Discord community in terms of providing the latest and greatest news and testing on latest models, states that the images don't quite live up to Nano Banana Pro in his opinion. The faces feel a little bit plasticky, and he hopes it's still not based off of 4.0. It is absolutely better than GPT Image-1, I don't think there's any denying that. But as Can responded here, I am also pretty sure that this model is still still based on GPT-4.0. Oh, from what I've seen so far, I'm gonna agree with Adam Holter. So far, this model does not seem to really live up to Nano Banana Pro. I don't have access to it yet, personally, so I can't test it and really benchmark it for myself. While it is better, Nano Banana Pro might just be too good to beat. Angel demonstrates a test prompt. We've got another diagram, this time a recipe on how to make a certain type of chai, fragrant spiced Indian tea. One and one over zero cups of water. I assume that's supposed to be one over two cups of water, so a half cup. One cup milk, two tablespoon black tea leaves, three to four green cardamom pods crushed. I assume that comes from a plant. A little bit of sugar, ginger, cinnamon, and cloves. Seem to be pretty sound ingredients for making like a chai or a tea. In a saucepan, bring water to a boil with crushed cardamom and optional spices. Add your tea and simmer for two to three minutes. Add your milk and sugar. Strain and serve. It definitely crushed this recipe, and I love all of the artistic little drawings doesn't really seem to have made any glaring mistakes but this is a pretty simple recipe this might actually be easier than the cell prompt this right here is nano banana pro with the same prompt some things you'll notice some things i'm noticing right off the bat comparing gpt image 2 and nano banana pro nano banana pro i think is a little bit simpler on the ingredient side chat gpt did offer cinnamon and cloves you don't see that on the ingredients list here for nano banana pro but everything is listed it as a photo and text. Even all of the individual instructions have their own unique photo showing you what part of the process is actually being conducted. This one has images as well, but they're kind of just random parts of the process, not for each individual step or ingredient. Although some people might like this format a little bit more. I think it's got a nicer artistic touch to it. This is probably a little bit more basic, I would say. Still though, the texture looks right. Crush the pods, bring the water to a boil, add the tea leaves, ginger, simmer for three minutes, add the milk and sugar, bring to a boil again. That's a good thing to actually mention. Uh, simmer for two to three minutes. It doesn't say bring to a boil though. Okay, maybe we're getting a little bit too much into the semantics. It even has tips though at the bottom too for the perfect chai. Only tip we have here is to adjust sugar and spices to taste, boil longer for stronger flavor, or use whole milk. I don't know, both of these are pretty good. I think this really just comes down to user preference. Which kind of design and explanation do you like more? As I'm recording this video, OpenAI drops GPT 5.2. I was actually going to talk about rumors surrounding this model in some early tests, but now that it's here, let's just dive fully into it. Element Arena is posting some pretty impressive demos. Various 3D coding pieces made with 5.2. This model is really surprising me already with its capabilities. This is a 3D model of the Golden Gate Bridge. We even have different weather settings, time of day, traffic, density, and I mean, you saw the reflections and the waves going on in the water, right? It actually doesn't look too bad. This is definitely... Definitely a lot better than what I was expecting. I know Gemini 3 Pro is really good, but this might actually be about just as good. And again, its ability to do all of this with just code. It's not like we're providing it with images. It just knows about the Golden Gate Bridge and how to replicate it along with adding traffic density, fog, and time of day settings. This next one, look at all the blocky voxel foliage down here. We've got reflections on these big pyramids. They have like glistening golden tops, which is pretty cool. This is an impressive model. This, the code here, look at this. It launches a rocket into the air. We have liftoff. This is dragon dance. Okay, wow. Look at all the lights and stuff and all the particle effects. Definitely knows how to add a good amount of detail into a singular working project. This is going to be competitive with Gemini 3 and Claude 4.5 Opus, no doubt about it. Stonehenge, the Solstice Lab, that's pretty cool. Oh, Murmuration, oh, it's like a flock of birds. Okay, that's cool. Wow, Ancient Rome with the Colosseum as well, that's pretty awesome. Obviously, these are all very similar prompts. We're using voxels, we're using HTML. Look at the animated fish at the bottom. That's pretty crazy. Ooh, Outrun Drive, Synthwave Runner, Ice Stories, just doing like some ice skating. And yeah, like all of this does look rudimentary. It looks simple, but 
trust me, before Gemini 3, getting an AI to produce something on this level even was so difficult. This is definitely like graduate level coding. You know, it's starting to create projects cohesively. Just from that, I can tell you this, this has to be a bump over GPT 5.1, a pretty significant one. In Ella Marina, we can actually see GPT 5.2 high beating out Opus 4.5 and Gemini 3 Pro, but only by a few ELO points. The only one to actually beat GPT 5.2 with high thinking is Claude Opus 4.5 with thinking. Sam also says that there are a few little Christmas presents for us next week, which is exciting. My gosh, today has already been quite the day. As Chris points out, these benchmarks really do look good for 5.2. I was very skeptical. I didn't think that they would be able to compete with Gemini 3. We've gotten 100% saturation in AIM 2025 with no tool use. That's pretty insane. 92.4 GPQA Diamond with no tools. Greg Brockman gloats about the ARC AGI scores. Two orders of magnitude efficiency improvement over the past year. 5.2 Pro scoring a 90.5% at about 11 bucks a task. Okay, GPT 5.2 with high thinking, scoring over 85% for just under a dollar. If you look down at Opus 4.5 thinking, for example, you can see it actually scores a little bit worse on this benchmark. Doesn't mean it's worse in every way, but it is around the same price. Very close, actually. Very close. Rock 4 thinking is just underneath. 5.2 Pro gets the score even higher, while significantly increasing the cost, of course. Yeah, it looks like 5.2 sits right in that happy medium of the highest percentage scores for the lowest cost per task. I'm sure that next year, it's going to leapfrog again. It's really just like an absolute race to the moon here. If you're wondering, uh, no, I don't have access to 5.2 yet. Even on the pro plan, Matthew Berman is gloating over here. He had early access to 5.2 and he says it's a really good model. No, I'm just joking around. Even if they aren't in chat GPT yet, they will be very soon. It is in the API immediately. You'll see that this model can intake images, but not video. Although I'm pretty sure it, it can actually structurally and they're just keeping that feature locked for some reason, locked away. Apparently, this can output images as well, which is very interesting to see in, in the API here. August 31st, 2025 knowledge cutoff, 400,000 context window. That's pretty healthy. Yeah, the prices here, it's definitely a little bit more than GPT-5, but I assume that's coming at a genuine benefit of higher performance. All right, in the API, I've set the reasoning effort to high. We want to make a realistic water physics test, HTML. Full 3D, you can interact with reflections, waves, click anywhere to drop a lemon into the water. We, uh, we tested this prompt on Gemini 3, and it did very good at one shot for me, but I had some users in the comments and on X say that they tried the same exact prompt and were having difficulties getting Gemini 3 to produce a good result every time. This is not an easy prompt, even for Gemini 3, so we'll see how 5.2 handles it. The code is generating! The code is generating! It seems to generate code pretty quickly. Total of two minutes to output, and we got 4,000 output tokens, and that's almost 4,000 reasoning tokens as well. Definitely had to do some thinking. All right, it did about 400 lines of code. That's not too big, uh, but yeah, it's definitely not working. It should appear down here in code pen. All right, it is going to attempt to rectify these issues. Oh man, I don't like this. Instead, it's making the assumption that I screwed something up loading up code pen instead of just fixing its own code. All right, we'll have it try one more time. I'm sure they've been focusing on ways to increase efficiency. Seems where everyone seems to be headed, at least regardless regarding LMs. All right, this time we have some better working code, but as you can see, things aren't quite right. We can make our lemons appear. They look like they might be floating in water. Uh, the water isn't here. It is, it's a little bit mystical. It's a little spooky. Usually this helps. I'm just gonna go ahead and grab a screenshot of what it created. This is what you made. Please improve on it. Oh, it's generating a normal map texture to bring everything to life. CPU ripple simulation in JavaScript. Discrete wave equation. At least our simulation does have, like, reflections of some form. I don't know. There's definitely something going wrong here. By the way, this is what Gemini 3 Pro was originally able to produce for me. Very, very much impressive. The size and density sliders are newer additions, but 
Yeah, it did kind of one-shot the simulation. Okay, this looks like it's going to be a little bit longer. Sometimes when using these models to generate code, for example, they can appear to be a little bit lazy. Uh, Gemini 3 also kind of has a, a case of the lazies. Simple prompts, things that aren't super well-defined, sometimes you won't get as uh, detailed of a refined output, but it really seems to be going off in this case. For you Claude 4.5 Opus users, does that model exhibit any laziness? Or does it seem to like to generate a lot of code or be very verbose, for example? Oh my gosh! That was 7,000 output tokens with over 5,000 reasoning tokens. All right. That looks insane. Now, what does it look like pasted into CodePen? Okay, 730 lines, and there we go. We now have, like, walls, and we can actually zoom in to see our lemons fall into the water. Oh, okay, there's a reflection. It's definitely going about creating the water a very different way than Gemini. Oh my god, guys, our lemons are a little bit glitchy, and they might even be floating a little bit. Okay, 5.2 is producing ghost lemons. I like the movement, though. We can definitely make our way around the project quite a bit easier. C will clear all of our lemons, drop a new lemon in. It's pretty good. I think once it goes underwater, we start to see it through like a reflection, which is having some weird effects and consequences. <laughs> I do think Gemini did better two-shotting this test, honestly. Fewer lines of code too. Let's try a physics-based jelly jumping game. I'm going to give a fresh prompt to Gemini 3 Pro, and I'll send the same exact prompt to GPT 5.2. I gotta say, Gemini 3 also generates very fast now. To produce its Jelly Jumper, we used 632 lines of code. Alright, Jelly Jumper. Oh my god. That was awful. I'll turn that way down for you guys in post, but oh my god. That was like max volume in my headphones. Why would you... Do this, Gemini. ChatGPT is well on its way. Holy, over a thousand lines of code to do this? Oh my freaking god. Where's my jelly? He seems to be teleporting. There we go, jelly jumper. Let's see if we can fling over to this other side. Oh my god, it brought us all the way over here. We seem to have been deformed. Jumping is clearly, like, way too strong. My jelly guy is going, like, everywhere. He looks great in the beginning. I actually really like the graphics and overall design here. Even the song is good. We just clearly seem to be having a little bit of a struggle with the physics engine here. And actually completing levels. Oh my gosh, yeah, it's just like, the flinging is way too strong. You can hold shift for a wall stick? Oh my gosh, that is crazy. Does the sticking work? Oh, I can use WASD to move as well. Can I jump? No, I have. I think I have to fling to jump. Let's go up here. Oh my gosh. It's just not working. It's way too strong. Okay, the jelly fling issue, honestly, I think we could probably fix that without even using chat GPT. It's probably just a literal number change. Well, this is definitely better than what Gemini made. If I could ever beat the first level. There we go. Okay, this. I think this portal is... <laughs> supposed to take me to the next like level or it does say this is a prototype up in the corner really impressed by it a thousand lines of code real working music actual physics jelly platformer and i mean the flinging is a little bit insane and crazy but color me impressed seriously jelly jumper okay this is google's uh, fix. Not getting any cool music with this one, but I do like the jelly ball rolling. The simulation is running way too fast because of my display's frame rate. The jumping is good. Let's see if I can make this. Now, this is just virtually unplayable because everything is moving too fast. The physics are way too fast. It's assuming that my screen is running at 60 frames per second. There we go. Okay, we got the jelly up here. Let's make it to the next one. Oh, I'm heavily deformed. <laughs> this one's really, really hard. So was the other one, though. <laughs> it's simple, like, little stuff that, like, the AI is just going to overlook, or it's going to make the assumption. Everyone's hardware is a little bit different, and there are sometimes strategies that need to be implemented to make sure that a game, or whatever you're creating, actually works on a large variety of different systems. I am starting to like this one a lot. All right, guys, so OpenAI versus Google, who is winning this battle? Look, I think GPT Image 2 definitely might be a little bit worse than Nano Banana Pro, but after just messing around with GPT 5.2 and directly comparing it to Gemini 3 Pro, man, 5.2 is actually really good. Surprisingly competitive model and 
for that jelly prompt over a thousand lines of code that's a good starting point to a project let me know what you guys think once i get full access in my chat gpt i'm definitely gonna have a lot more fun with this 5.2 model tomorrow i've got a bigger news roundup coming i didn't think open ai would be able to bring things back so fast before the end of the year but here we are see you guys in the next video thanks for watching and goodbye